Okay, so now we're looking at problem number three here on the list of problems. And they tell us here that the claim is that the mean is greater than 100. That the mean is greater than 100. Okay, so when you see that, you know that the alternative hypothesis is also that the mean is greater than 100, because remember, greater than is one of the alternative hypothesis is symbols. Now, from there, we're going to draw a curve and realize that that greater than symbol means that we have a right tail test, a one tail test on the right hand side. So we'll be looking for the critical value that's located right here that starts the rejection region, right? And they tell us that alpha is 0.02. So alpha is 0 0.02. Now, if that's the case, that means that uh, we're looking for all of the alpha, the 2%, to be inside of this tail. It turns out that number is not going to be found on our t table. And because it's not found on our t table, we're going to have to use the z table to look that up. In other words, we don't have alpha of 0.02 on our t table. It's just not one of the val values that's available. When it's a one-tailed test, we just look up alpha. We don't look up um, alpha divided by 2. If we had alpha divided by 2, which would be 1%, we could find that on our t-table. But we're unable to find this on the t-table. So what we're going to have to do is to use the z-table, which makes sense because it's a z-value anyways. That's not so bad, right? Half the curve is 50%. So we know the area from here to here would be 4,800. And if that's the case, It'll be that 4,800 that we have to look up because it's that 4,800 that's associated with the z-score located at this position on the curve. So we're going to look up 4,800 so that we find this z-score. So this is one of the few times where we can't use the t-table to get those critical z-values. When that happens, we have to look up the area from the line to the center because that's how the z-table reads. So let's look that up and figure out what z-score is associated with 4,800. So let's go to the table now and try to find that out. Okay, so we're looking for the closest area to 0 0.4800, 0 0.4800. So let's look at this first column only at first. Let's try to find the closest thing to 0 0.4800 in that column. So we're going to sc scroll down as we look at this. Okay, and I see two rows here that would contain, um, possibly contain the 4800. Looks like this row here, 2.0 row, as the closest thing to it most likely. So when I look at that, I see that this number, 4798, is the closest between these two. This one's pretty close, but that one's closer. So we find that the answer is 2.05, 2.05. Okay, so we find the answer to be 2.05 from the z-table. All right, and that's it.